Hi, my name is James Kaufman. I'm a professor of educational psychology at the NEAG School of Education at the University of Connecticut. And what I'm going to talk about today is a little bit about anti-creativity bias and why that might be the case. So research has shown that there is a decent amount of anti-creativity bias. In other words, people tend to not like creative people. And this is often unconscious. So people might say they like creative people, but if you are able to examine their attitudes in a more subtle way, you find these biases. And this is found in the average person. It's found in teachers. It's found in organizations. So creative people, for example, are seen as being less apt to be good leaders. And the question, of course, is why? I mean, sometimes creativity is associated with less desirable traits. So, for example, creative people can be a bit of a pain in the ass. They can be disruptive. You know, creative kids can use up more time from a teacher. Creative workers may not always be task focused. But something that Ron Baghetto and I have been exploring is the idea of creative metacognition. In other words, do you know when to be creative and when not to be creative? And do you know your creative strengths and weaknesses? So there are some times when you don't want creativity. If your pilot is landing the plane and it's a routine landing, you don't want to hear the pilot say, you know, I'm going to try this brand new landing just to see how it works. Or if you're going to get a cavity filled, you want your dentist to fill that cavity the exact same way that she's filled every other cavity she's done. You don't want a new technique. Other times, you very much want creativity. If the plane loses an engine or if blood starts spurting out of your mouth, that's a good time for creative problem solving. What happens is that if people don't know when to be creative, and if they're not always aware that maybe they aren't quite as creative as they could be, then they're the ones who are more disruptive. They're the ones who might pick a poor time, such as preparing for a test or during a test, to be creative in the classroom, or pick a bad time in general to express their creativity. Whereas somebody who's very high in creative metacognition would know, I have this great idea, but I'm going to hold on to it for a good time. And what we argue is that it's the people who have low creative metacognition, who there might be a bias against. It's not necessarily that people dislike creativity. They dislike it when it becomes an annoyance. They dislike it when creativity interferes with productivity or a smooth classroom. And somebody who knows this is a good time to be creative will avoid these situations. Mm -hmm.